Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at pyjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. In this tutorial, I'll be uh, talking out my Land Cruiser steering with uh, using JNI, Java Native Interface, Java Native Code, C++, and PyGPO, where I call it PigPyO, if, just because, I don't know, it sounds good to me. But anyway, uh, let's get started. First thing we'll do is open up my website, pyjava.com, select Py Programming. I'm going to scroll down here to this tutorial right here. So in this tutorial, we'll demonstrate how to use some simple functionality of the PigPyO library to control our steering servo on GPIO pin 23. Now, if you've been paying attention to my tutorials, you'll know that GPIO pin 23 is not a pulse width modulation pin. But using the PigPyO library, we can control the servo very accurately. So I will be using Java Native Interface along with C++ to control the servo. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, and one more thing here before we before I remote in there, I'm going to just pull up my my webcam here. So I've added the um, I've added this little roof rack. I got it from eBay or not eBay, uh, Amazon there. And uh, so the Raspberry Pi is going to ride up here in the roof rack on the Land Cruiser here. Um, sticking out of the bottom of the car is the 7.2 volt battery there, and I've just got this little adapter with a couple of alligator clips on it there. And then, of course, this wire coming out of here is the servo controller wires. You can probably tell by the three wires that are coming out of that. And I got some stuff up here in the breadboard that I'll go into in a, in a little bit later, and we'll do some zooming in on that here. But the first thing we want to do is just pop open and... Uh... Oh, and by the way, the Raspberry Pi is running off of the battery bank, which is inside of inside of the Toyota Land Cruiser right now too. So it's it's fully up and operational, completely wireless, running on its own power source. All right, um, let's go ahead and minimize that and let's remote into the Raspberry Pi. Oh, well, I thought I had already connected. We'll go ahead and just connect real quick here. <clears throat> okay, so the... Um, well, the first thing I'm going to do is just open up a web browser there and I'll open up terminal here. I'll just get started while that's coming up there. We need to go to my website so we can do some cutting and pasting. We don't want to type in all that stuff there. Eh, you might want to have for just for practices, but you don't want to watch me in the video do all that. So we'll just go into Pi Programming and just get all this ready here. All right. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to make your Java, and I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you there. Uh, we're going to change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called uh, Land Cruiser. And this Land Cruiser folder is kind of going to kind of be like my final project folder. So today when we add the steering class to it, we're actually not going, it's going to be a part of the permanent project here. So, um, oh yeah, mkdir. Not over in the land of Windows DOS there. All right, let's change direct land. Uh, there we go. And I am going to uh, leaf pad, and we're going to call this steering.java. Okay. All right, so um, let's come over here and take all of the steering class here. Copy that and come over here and paste it. Okay. All right. Um, so in the steering class, I've got some, well, basically uh, static final ints up here steering center, steering right, and steering max. And I came up with these values uh, basically through like just trial and error, and you know how far the actual physical steering linkage will go and where the servo will kind of center up the wheels there. So my center is at about 1400. And for the GPIO, or the, the PigPIO library, the PyGPIO library there, um, 1400 represents about a uh, 1.4 millisecond uh, pulse width there. So, And then um, when my wheels stopped turning physically to the right, it was at 1130, and to all the way to the left was 1670. So this is about 
1.13 milliseconds and about 1.167 milliseconds. So we can get some serious accuracy going into these thousands instead of just hundreds, which I was demonstrating earlier in my tutorials. Earlier using the uh, the wiring pi, it was just easier to do at a higher, a higher level so that, uh, you know, I don't go straight from like, hey, you know, welcome to Raspberry Pi in Java here, clear down to, hey, wow, look at how low level we are. We don't want to, we need to go through some stuff. But anyway, uh, today we're going to be using GPIO pin 23, right? And if we come back up here, um, you can see that uh, we got our two 5 volts. We'll have our ground hooked up. We'll skip four over and we'll be using this one right here, okay? So that's not the pulse width modulation thing there. Now the uh, the native um, method is going to be called turn wheels. We're going to be passing it the pin and the pulse width. And the um, the library that we're going to be making is called steering, which of course which will be called lib lib steering so when our, when we finally make it here. I'll be going through all that. Now in the main method entry point here, um, the first thing I'm going to do is just create a reference to a new steering object, an object of itself there. And then I created, um, and then basically, you know, we got the turn wheels, the native method up here. So I'm going to be turning the wheels to their center, waiting three seconds, turning the wheels to the right, waiting three seconds, turning the wheels to the left, waiting three seconds. And then I created this uh, method here called test full range. Test full range simply starts off since we were on the left anyway, and it just basically turns the wheels, um, and then so it starts off. For example, that value is 1670, right? And then it will subtract out five from that, and then you know basically uh, turn the wheels by little increments of five, sleep 20 milliseconds, and then keep going. So it'll have the effect of testing the full entire range of turning left to right. I could have done this by one, but that's just too too precise. We don't really need to be that precise when we're just testing the steering range there. Okay, so let's go ahead and come up here and save this. We'll close out of it. We'll come over here and do Java C, steering.java to compile it, okay? And then we wanna build our header, so we do uh, Java H minus J and I, and um, <clears throat> steering, right? And that will give us our header our header file there. If we do an ls minus l, you can actually see that. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. Get something to drink here real quick. <coughs> Sorry about that. So our steering class was created by Java C. That's our byte code. Here's our steering h and our steering java. You can look in that steering h if you're curious about it, but we're just going to move on here. So now we're going to go to leafpad.cpp, which is our C++ file. And let's just come over back to the website here. We'll cut and paste that in there. And I'll explain a little bit more about that there as well. <clears throat> the magic of what's going to happen here. Okay, so... Um, the uh, standard I.O. here, that's pretty straightforward with C++. Now this is the pigpio.h, right? And that, uh, we don't have to download or install anything on that. The Raspberry Pi 3 Model B already comes with that pre-installed pre there, the pigpio library. Um, we're including our steering.h, which uh, the Java H minus J and I, we compiled that there, right? And then using namespace standard here is basically like just a C++ uh, namespace using it's just like a kind of like a Java you know import and so on and so forth there um, you can see this is the name of our class right and this is that name of the method that we created up there the native method in our Java file there right um, these first two parameters you can just kind of ignore those they kind of always come in there but this j int and I'll go in a future tutorial what j int means it's just basically an int, but it's the Java native int equivalent. And then we've got our pin and our pulse width. So we're passing in both of those. And if you remember that from the method up top there, then I'm just going to be displaying those to the console. And now um, in this, uh, this PyGPIO library here, the first thing we want to do is call this method GPIO initialize. And if it's less than zero, that means it failed out. And we'll just display to the console failed to initialize the GPIO. So far, I haven't had any troubles with that. And then we'll return out of this here. 
Uh, otherwise, we'll invoke this method that's part of the, the pig pile library there, GPIO servo, and we pass it the pin and the pulse width, which is coming in directly from the turn wheels thing there, right? And then we'll just return one. And I'm not doing anything with that one there. So let's go ahead and save this here. And now we'll just go ahead and compile it and run it. So let's close out of that. <clears throat> we want to do G plus plus minus shared and then minus uppercase I slash home slash pi slash JD and I'll hit tab. Oh, I got a couple of tabs slashes in there now um, if if you're looking at this going what on earth did he just do right there with that JDK thing be sure you watch my previous tutorial on installing the JNI on there because you'll need to he'll need to know what I'm what I'm doing here okay there's our first oops wait I didn't want to do that let me hit the up arrow and now I do minus I for the other header file there that we're looking interested in home slash pi JD include and this is in the Linux one underneath there okay we can either leave the slash on or slash off it doesn't really matter okay and then we're going to be compiling the file that we just made steering dot cpp and minus o for our output file remember how I talked about we need this lib and steering dot so right and if, I'm just going to pop back up because I just want to reiterate where this is all coming from. This this load library inside this static block up here. See the steering right here? That is looking for a file named this lib, prefix with lib steering.so. Okay? And then the last thing we want is a minus L and pig pile for the pig pile library. <clears throat> okay. And we'll hit enter on this. Okay, so it returned us back there, so we didn't get any errors. So if I do ls Minus L, let's see what we got here, right? There's our live steering, right? So that we needed right there. Um, and we've got our byte code, our C++, our header, and our steering. So now we're ready to go ahead and run this. So anytime we access these uh, GPIO pins and stuff like that, we really need like super user privileges. So we're gonna do sudo java and then minus uppercase D, right? And java.library, we have to tell it where we have to give it the path because otherwise Java, when the JVM, when we invoke that there, it's not going to know where this live steering.so path is, even though it's in the same directory. We have to actually specify that. And when we do the minus D, that tells it, uh, and we specify java.library.path, and then dot is the current one there, and then we're invoking the steering class. Okay. All right, so before we do that, <clears throat> let me go ahead and just... Um, yeah, we're done with the website, so we don't need that mucking anything up. I'm going to put this in a half window over here, and let's bring in our this over here. Okay, so we have to hook up the, uh, I'll kind of show you, go through what I've done here as far as how all this is going to be configured here. So let me refocus that. All right, so the first thing I've got, I'm going to do here is I'm going to hook in this black wire over to the third pin over, right, which is our ground. And then I'm going to skip four pins and plug our transmit wire, which is our signal transmitter, over to there. Okay? So I've got two empty pins, a black pin, then I've got four empty pins and this white wire coming out of here. Okay? Now, um, down here on the breadboard, We'll just do a, a little focus. I'm gonna, I can twist this in just a little bit more there. And I, get, I think that'll be good enough right there. Okay, so um, these two, the positive and negative here, are coming off of the battery that's the 7.2 volt 3, 3200 milliamp battery. Okay, and the Red wire is going into the positive lead on the breadboard, and the black wire is going into the negative. Okay, now um, the negative wire that's going over to the Raspberry Pi here, right? This one right here has to be tied into there. Okay, now further on down the breadboard here, I've got the the red, the positive power, right, going over here to this little row. And then this, this red wire traces all the way down to the center. And see if I can get that in the 
into the center wire for the servo control, okay, which is the hot wire there, okay? The, the black wire coming right here, right, goes over to here, and that just goes right over to the black wire going into the darkest wire on the servo control there, okay? And then I've got the white wire coming out of the Raspberry Pi. It's going through a diode and then into this white wire which goes into the communications wire which is the lightest color wire on the servo. Now the reason why I stuck this diode in here uh, in between the communications line and the hot line there is we do get some motor, we, do, we get motor radio frequency feedback from that, right? And on the diode, there's uh, basically this, this, on this end of the diode, it's kind of hard to see actually, there. On this end of the diode, there is a, um, a little gray band there, right? And that indicates that the electricity can only flow this way through the circuit. It cannot flow back this way. So any signal interference that we're getting back through this white wire from the, the motor cannot flow back up and cause damage to the Raspberry Pi, okay? And um, we're going to get a cleaner uh, signal over here. I put another one there. Let's see if you can get some wires out of the way. I put another one on the red in between these two red wires here. And that just prevents like servo jitter from any of those radio frequency from going back through the, the hot lead, okay? All right, so, and I'll go over in future tutorials what diodes are, but just know that uh, basically the diodes have the, um, the little band on both of these, both these ends here, okay? So that's how it fits into the circuit. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and run all this, but you need to see the wheels actually turn. Get the, get the camera all repositioned, sorry about that. Okay, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good angle there to see the, you know, maybe I'll get it, maybe I'll get it just kind of straight on, so. That would be the best way to see both of the tires turning there. I think that's pretty good there. Okay, and, and uh, the wheels are slightly turned at an angle right at the moment right now. They're not straight on, so let's go ahead and, uh, go ahead and come over here and we'll hit... Uh, we'll press enter on this. <clears throat> okay, so the wheels are now in there. Then they turn to the right, turn to the left, and now they're about to do their little test where they just go from the left and to the right. <clears throat> okay, so I think that's pretty much um, everything that I wanted to cover on this video, so... I'm just going to go ahead and um, kill that, and I think I'll just leave you guys with some, well, maybe, you know what, I'll just run it one more time here, and we'll run it, uh, we'll blow it all up uh, full size there. Yep, and that does our nice little slow left and right back and forth there on that. Okay, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that. Let's pop back in here, Control c to kill that. And I'll leave you guys with some final thoughts on this video here. Let me get this off the screen there. All right, so uh, stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will demonstrate how I will be doing the socket communications, which will ultimately be the key to how the Android and iPhone will remote control the Land Cruiser. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.